What up, y'all? All right, so I heard you say you wanted to get into real estate. Well, today I want to just go over the steps you need to take to get into real estate. Your first step is going to be understanding this stuff, understanding what exactly it is that you want out of real estate. All right. Do you want to have tenants? Do you want to flip a property? Do you want uh, to sell properties? What do you want out of real estate? So I was uh, <clears throat> talking to somebody, somebody had inboxed me and I told them just simply find a deal. When you find a deal, that's like going on Zillow or connecting with your realtor. The thing that you're going to do is sign a purchase agreement or a contract. I have some on www.fromprisontoproperty.com. You can download it. It's the exact purchase agreement I used when I bought my second house. So what happened was I was at work. We was giving the lady a ride home from work, and she said that she wanted to sell her house. My ears perked up so because I wanted to buy houses. All right, It was my second one. And she said, I want to sell it for $25,000. That sounded real low. And it was livable. So she was living in it, but she wanted to sell it. It didn't need a lot of work. So I went and looked at the house. It was worth it. Um, I looked it up online and everything. It was worth like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. I think it was $48,000. So we signed a purchase agreement. So the only thing that go into purchase agreement is the property, who's buying it, what they're buying it for, uh, when you will close on the deal. So I wanted to buy it from her, obviously. So we wrote my name, we wrote the address to the property and all of the legal detail, the legal description of it is, is uh, a legal description is just different from the actual address. So for one of these properties, it might be North 82 degrees, east, 50 degrees, lot six, block 27. You know what I mean? Like that's the legal description of where the property is at. So and when you sign in a purchase agreement, that goes into the purchase agreement. Um, how much you put down, your earnest money. So earnest money is the money that you give them to hold the property for you. So in some cases, you might have to put a hundred dollar earnest deposit down until y'all sign a contract and get the uh, mortgage. Go to the bank and get the money for it. That's a hundred dollar earnest contract. But one of my contracts, I put half down and then made them made payments on it. So I put it was a fifteen thousand dollar house. I put seventy five hundred dollars down. We signed a contract, and then I gave them payments. So I gave them 3,500 and then another 3,800 or whatever. And it was 15,000 altogether, but he charged me interest on that. So, um, that's, that's another way to sign a purchase agreement. You make payments, you, you write everything down, how you're going to make the payments, when you're going to make the payments. And those that's right there. That is just like the legal work of it. So it's not very hard. All of my properties, I just did them all myself. I didn't go through a lawyer. You probably should if you don't know what you're doing. But I figured I read about this for eight years. You know, doctors go to school for eight years. So I felt like, you know, I knew what I was doing. Everything went good. But if you don't know what you're doing, things can go wrong. So I advise you to use a lawyer, use an attorney whenever you're doing all of this. But the purchase agreement is um, who's buying the property, what they're buying the property for, when they're going to close on it, the uh, amount that you put down. And it's things like inspections and things like that that people have to pay for. So in a purchase agreement, you're usually going over who's paying for the inspections, like the termite damage or whatever it may be. You're going over all of that whenever you sign a purchase agreement. And then... Uh, for the most part, most purchase agreements is short. Like this one right here, it's three pages. So it, it's not a big long process. It's just basic facts. Who's paying Who's paying what, how much you're paying, and things like that. So if you're riding down the street, 
and you see a house that says for sale by owner. That's the perfect example. Knock on the door, call the number and say, hey, what you selling it for? He say $100,000. The first thing you ask is, will you do seller financing? So that's, that's him essentially being the bank. So now if he's the seller financer, and that means he's on he owned the property outright and he'll let you make payments to him as opposed to you having to go to a bank, get a loan, get approved for a loan. Like some people don't have the credit to get approved or some people don't have the job history or the big old down payment. So it's things like that 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 some people just don't know how easy it is to get into real estate. So you knock on the door, you ask him, hey, you want to do seller financing? He says, yes, y'all sign a purchase agreement or a lease with an option to purchase or uh, rent to own. All of these terms is interchangeable. They all the same thing. It's basically the land, the owner being the landlord. So you sign a purchase agreement and he'll give you time. In that case, in one case, one of my properties, he gave me three years to come up with the rest of the money. So I gave him $10,000. He gave me three years to come up with the other $85,000. One, one deal, this deal right here and specifically, he gave me one year to come up with the rest of the money. So I gave him half right now and he gave me a year to come up with the other half. So it's Whatever you want to do with the per, with the uh, seller, it's all up to y'all to negotiate it and come up with the best deal for both of y'all. So, um, whenever you are uh, ready to close on it, then that's whenever you go to your lawyer because the lawyer is the one that has the deed, the title to the to the house, the deed. Um, usually, the same per, the same lawyer that closed on the deal will have the deed with him at his office. So you find who has the deed, who has the title and a title, a title company does that for you. It's a small fee, but um, they go over the title and make sure that there's no liens on the property. Make sure um, like a contractor came through, did a roof and you didn't pay him. So he put a lien on your property where you have to pay him before you can transfer it. So that's what a title company is mainly used for, things like that. So after you get your purchase agreement signed, you go to your lawyer. Your lawyer got the deed, got the title, everything. And you um, you will, um, you know, execute the deal, like finish paying them or whatever the situation may be. You will um, go into the, uh, the lawyer's office and... Whenever you are um, closing on the deal, everything should be in place as far as, um, what's up, bro? Class in session, yeah. <laughs> we talking about uh, contracts and uh, seller financing and things like that. So whenever you closing on this deal, everything should be in place. You um, had the money. You, have, you, ha you and him going to both sit at the table and y'all just going to sign it. And you'll get your receipt. And then after that, the deed will be transferred into your name. So that's the easiest way to do it. You know, whenever you go to the bank and do it, it's going to be the same process. Sometimes you don't need to be there. or the, I mean, sometimes the seller don't need to be there or whatever it may be. But every situation is different. But I just wanted to go over contracts because this is the first step to getting into real, real estate. You know, signing the contract, finding the property, talking to the seller and signing the contract. Who's buying it, what they buying it for, when they will close on the deal and all of those things. So uh, if you go on my website, I got a free uh, contract on there where you can just enter in your uh, email information and you can download the contract. It's the same contract I use to buy one of my houses. It's not a complicated process. You just fill in the blanks and... Uh, you and the seller, y'all agree to what y'all want to do. So every con every contract is different. Some sellers might want 10%, some might want 50%. So y'all just talk it out and make something happen. 
So I just wanted to do a little short video on that, just explaining it to some people who ready to get into real estate, but just don't know. So if you got any questions, just inbox me.